Are micro fractures a myth? Watch us take good care of three lockers and three wire gates that we bought just so we can destroy them. Oh no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Jinx and welcome to Slack Snap where we test and break all sorts of things. And we've been interested in climbing stuff, so we are gonna do some micro fracture tests. We have basically bought six Mammut Crag wire gate carabiners, three of which we will just keep doing that, and we bought three Mammut wall micro lock carabiners. And just to kind of mix it up, we're also gonna trash those. And these are the ones that I'm not trashing and I don't want to mix that up. Um, and then we're gonna pull on the Slack Snap machine after we get home and see if there's a difference between new versus old. Because MBS isn't always what they say it is. So it's nice to have some new ones and old ones. No one sponsors this video so I can shit on carabiners if I want to. Anyways, let's do some very scientific methods here. Something that really bothers me is the fact that I was told when I first started climbing 15 years ago that doing that, well, you'd have to retire your carabiner. And, um, yeah, they are getting chewed up. <laughs> Basically, a micro fracture is a crack in the aluminum you're technically not able to see. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> and, uh, and then you just never know if it's gonna break on you at any moment and kill you. So that's why you don't wanna use uh, carabiners you find that were left on repels or anything. You just wanna know the history of your gear, which is not always a bad thing. However, oh, <laughs> that was cool. Let's see if I can get an instant replay. Probably will hit me in the face if I do. Anyways, I'm just gonna basically do this for quite a bit and, oops and we're gonna just trash them until they look like shit and uh and then we're going to brake test them on the machine so yeah let's see if micro fractures are a thing Science. All right, we just got home from Yosemite and we have enough time in the day to break these because we're pretty excited about it. We have been trashing and throwing them around probably a hundred times each these have hit the ground and they're looking really, really chewed up. And something interesting that we notice at least with the wire gates is this is a lot softer than the new ones. Basically the wire gates are not closing as firmly and as a new one. So we did notice that um, performance going down and of course the finish is super, super chewed up. And as you can see here, they are pretty, pretty bad. As far as the lockers go, uh, this is the beat up one and this one isn't. Like, there's definitely a notice in the gate but this one's closing just fine. Um, but <laughs> they're looking really, really chewed up. They seem to be functioning just, just fine. So let's put them on our slack snap machine here and brake test them. What we have here is a test bed that is basically just a big aluminum rectangle with pulleys on that end. And we have, I started with this crane scale, which is 50,000 pounds, not necessary for most of the brake tests. So we have this, Lorenzo DeMiro loaned me this dyno that goes up to 10,000 pounds. And the closer you are to your brake test range, uh, the more accurate your dyno is going to be. So what we have here is a line scale two. It's the second generation of uh, dynamometer for slack lines and stuff from linegrip.com. And this goes up to 30 kilonewtons and is plenty strong to break this carabiner. So many times we have no idea what things are going to break at. So we uh, can't use this. And even soft shackles will break um, higher than this can read. So sometimes we only get to go with the big dyno. What I have here is a 20 to one pulley system. 
Basically, you get 10 strands on this side and 10 strands on this side working together in order to create enough force to break up to our PR, our personal record right now is I think 178 kilonewtons, which is very scary. What we have on this side is a Costco wench and two strands going in at the same time in order to get a 10 to one speed. Otherwise, this thing would just have to run, run, run just to move it that much. So let's get pulling. All right, so the nose broke. You can see here that the MBS is 24 kilonewtons. Yeah, that aluminum is pretty cool. It's just really cool to see the unpolished aluminum. Anyways, so we got 25.97, which is a little bit above MBS. 26.3 on this one. This dyno is not going to read as accurate as um, it's rated for such higher forces, and it's probably a slower read. This is 40 hertz. Uh, 40 rates per second that it reads. And then this dynamometer is 5,100 pounds of force. Nope, 5,700 pounds of force. And this does measure only pounds of force. Please keep in mind, we are not trying to test UIAA ratings and, and standards and stuff. We're trying to compare apples for apples, these versus chewed up ones. And I believe it's a 10 millimeter rod that is tested. And these I believe are 12 millimeter possibly. Um, and so the diameters are not gonna completely match what was tested in a lab. We're just trying to test things abnormally in order to do some fun science. And what do we have here? And it broke in the same way. It basically snaps the nose off. All right, we got some pretty consistent results, except uh, this actually broke down the spine. Like, and the nose. And the nose. It broke both places. Oh, that's crazy. Let's see, 25.65, 26.4, 56.50. That's pretty consistent results for our new carabiners. All right, let's see if our beat up carabiners can give us the same results, except they are pretty ugly. Oh, this broke the, the bottom. Oh, interesting. And we got 23.7 and 24.5. Interesting, 52.50. So it did reduce the strength a little bit, but I don't know if that's really from a micro fracture. Maybe we can have a, a plague technical services. Maybe we'll do some analysis on this for us. All right, our carabiner is self-locking, self-catching. All right, so it looks like we only lost the nose on this one. Oh, it makes carabiners stronger when you throw them on the ground. <laughs> is that the conclusion? 27, 59, 50 pounds of force. That's pretty cool. Looks like a star, but I think that's the shape of the carabiner. 25.59. Micro fractures are a myth. 26.5. 5,700. So that's a thing. Oh. That's a thing. Cool, so it, it cracked. Oh wow, so it cracked the the notch, and this happened. That's pretty cool, that's the inside of a carabiner. Unpolished aluminum. What are the, what's the MBS on this? 24, and what'd we get, Bobby? 27. Whoa, MBS actually means something. 27.75 and 6,200 pounds of force. Where did, where did that one end up? So it came right toward the door as we were about to come out. Oh my gosh. 
Maybe we should hide somewhere else. <laughs> All right, so we got, uh, yep, a broken carabiner. I'm sure you're tired of seeing these. Let's just get to the numbers. 27.58. 28.55 or 6,150 pounds. Uh, where'd the locker go? There's a bit of it behind you. This might be this sample. We have no idea. Oh my God, there's another part. Wow, there's just shit everywhere. Um, cool. Anyways, <laughs> our last new locker got 26.54 kilometers. 27.35 on that dyno and 5,900 pounds of force. Hey, hey, it's always important to lock those beaners because now it's uh, still connected, sort of. Anyways, that's interesting that it broke right there. But this is super interesting. We got 21.11. That's quite a bit lower. 20.6 and 4,550 pounds of force, but we trashed these things uh, more than generally any time you would trash a gear. And it's still uh, perfectly safe according to that number. Okay, what sample is that? Oh shit. This is like the newer samples. I wondered where that thing went. Well, this is only half of this guy. Oh, here's the other half. Holy shit. All right, so this broke in two parts. There's that. What the hell? 27.89. 28.55. Is that our strongest test yet? It's the 6,150 yeah. pounds of force. Okay, we have, <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool looking. 26.90. It's funny, the first, the first bad break of each sample was really low and then the rest are like, Pretty good, 28 kilonewtons and 5,950 pounds of force. Okay, so microfractures, I believe, are a myth. If you drop your carabiner, it's not going to explode on you at any moment without you being able to see it. Now, of course, if you have an actual crack going through your carabiner, please just use it for your dog. Unless you have a big dog, then use it just for your small dog. However, I am certified in absolutely nothing. And so please don't take my word for this. Please put in the comments below links to microfracture reports and actual scientists. We're here to entertain and kind of bring some of these subjects to light that you may not have heard of in an entertaining way. We do have a slack snap machine and we do live near Yosemite. So we just put the two together for some fun. Now, keep in mind these carabiners that we tested, we had used, we were smacking them against rocks and throwing them as hard as we can. I don't think that climbing gear is usually that abused. So please take care of your climbing gear. Please keep in mind your life depends on this stuff and other people's lives depend on it. And don't be reckless.